Welcome back. This is the Northwest Tank Line Super Bowl show coming to you from Radio Row 22nd. We've been at 22nd year. We've been at the big game. It's the Moj along with Chris Burns coming to you from the Phoenix Convention Center. Super Bowl 57 featuring the Kansas City Chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, truth be told, Burns yells down there. Our good friend Nate Burleson's walking around chatting with Nate. Ah, Nate. I get a text, and hopefully we're going to get him on the show in the last day here. I get a text from Mike Whittingham, our producer. We can do Sanchez right now. I'm thinking, Mark Sanchez, that's a good get. I'm busting back here. I don't think you've ever seen me move that fast. It's only only Davis Sanchez. (laughs) Well, you can tell that you're in in Super Bowl mode because any other week of the year when the name Sanchez comes up, this is the guy you'd be thinking of. Of course. Right? But Super Bowl week, it changes a little bit because you're you're, – this guy's usually so busy, you can't Sanchez. find him. Hey, t- 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 hold on, hold on. We're going to do a little intro here. Davis Sanchez of TSN joining us. There well, we go. How are you enjoying the week? Uh, it's been good. Yeah, yeah You know what? Uh, last night got after a little bit. The first yeah. two nights or three nights I was tame, and, and last night got after a little bit. Yeah. So I'm not my best. The one thing in media that I, I've learned uh, rather quickly is that when you're hungover, just tighten your thoughts up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's hard to get your thoughts together on a, any day when you're hungover. It's real tough. So I just just really tightened stuff up. Again, I am the king of the long question. Yeah, I can yeah. relate to that. Like trying to when the mind is a little bit jumbled, and Moj is not afraid to remind me. Like shorten it up, man. <laughs> hey, let's put get it, it, it out. this way. Burns is sober a lot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, how many years you've been doing this now? Uh, I guess this uh, this is. Five or yeah. six, yeah. Yeah, are you enjoying you Five enjoying or six TV game? stuff, yeah. 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 No, yeah. I, lo- I love it. Yeah. Ab- absolutely. Yeah. Look, I, I, you know, it's cliche BS that uh, blessed and fortunate, yeah. but, but, but really. But I you have, are. I have, we all are. yeah. I mean, I, I have the uh, the best job that I could possibly have, in, you know, in, in my situation. And, and, and to further that, I'm not naive enough uh, to think there's not a hundred other guys that could that could be doing what I'm doing. So I, it's like, I don't take it for granted. Like, really, I'm just yeah. right place, right time. I work hard, and I'm handsome as heck. Yeah. But reality is there's a bunch of guys you know that what? are as qualified or more qualified than me. So I'm, I'm thankful for as heck to be doing this. people that don't know, your first gig doing any sort of analysis was on 1040, the Lions broadcast. Yeah. We brought yeah. you on, and I remember Julio telling you, he said, what do I got to do? And he said, get reps and do your homework. Yeah. Right? And I think that's the big thing that – the Davis Sanchez I saw then, mm-hmm. and all the ex-players tried doing it. Bernsey's still doing it. You go in there, you just kind of try to wing it because you're an ex-player and this and that. It's just getting <laughs> he Bernsey. said Bernsey's still doing it. <laughs> it's, not, <laughs> it's not wrong. <laughs> but you know where I'm going with that, though, right? I mean, you learn that as an analyst or someone in the media now, you got to work hard at your craft to be good at it. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And, and, you know, yeah, there's a lot of other guys. Especially that could, when you're not all that articulate either. Well, you know, you're doing <laughs> or have or have pipes like Moj. Well, you know, you know what, I, I that, better study that football because that's the that only is, only thing I'm good at is studying football. So I work true. at that. And you know what? Yeah, there are other guys that could do it, but you're, there's a reason you're doing it, right? Because you're yeah. better than them. If they were better than you, they'd be doing it. I appreciate it. Um, you know, everybody wants that job. And I remember talking to you. We've known each other a long time. Absolutely. Um, I remember talking to you when you were trying to make the decision about, like, you know, like, man, like, they want me to move to Toronto. And, you know, like, do I want to do that? And the questions about, like, what is this job going to be? Yeah. And it, just for looking at it from the outside, it seems to me this is kind of like this is what you hoped it would be, right? Oh, ab- absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it's – look, it's – you know, you kind of had a – and I left Vancouver – with no, with no, with a promise of nothing. Like TSN didn't say, "Hey, here, here's a job. Move to Toronto for a job." They, I worked for free. They, they yeah. said, they all they told me was Brett Bailey, who was producer producing CFL. Then he's now the the lead producer, or the big boss at TSN Edge. But but he basically said, "Come out here. We like what you're doing. We've seen some of the stuff. We like what you're doing. We think there's potential for you out here. I can't promise you a paying gig right now, but if you come out here." I can get you some reps and do some stuff, and I have a pretty good feeling that you'll stick around. So I basically had to, mm-hmm. you know, move out here and, and, and move out there and uh, and believe in myself and take a shot. So it was cool. It's and it's and it's uh, I miss home. That's for damn yeah. sure. David Sanchez from TSN is our guest. He's down here covering the Super Bowl, of course, for TSN. He's part of their crew. Um, you know, Burns was talking off there, and I said, "Hey, save it for honor." So let's get into this, guys. No, Burns, you want to talk about the secondaries, and of course, you always watch those DBs having played the position both in the NFL and the CFL. So, you look at the secondaries and how they stack up. Do you see a team having a decisive advantage in one or the other? Everybody 
would answer that question and say the Eagles have a much better secondary. And, you know, if you look at experience, pedigree, they do. But, but don't discount the young athletic guys in that Kansas City secondary. Kansas City basically went out this offseason and, and they drafted three corners. Like, you mm-hmm. don't draft three corners, but they went out and got younger, got athletic, including a first rounder, and now they can match up with whoever whoever they want and play man. If they want to play man, they can play man um, because of the young talent they have. So it's definitely Eagles have a better secondary, but talent-wise and young talent, KC has athletes. Well, and one of the reasons why I think you, everybody would say, especially if you look at stats, can, uh, Philly's got a better secondary because they got a better defense all around, yeah. right? Like nothing helps a secondary like – you know, a, a whole bunch of guys with double-digit sacks. Yeah, and nine, nine guys rolling through yeah. on their defensive line, and yeah. all of them are – and Dominican and, Sue's and, your eighth, your eighth yeah. defensive lineman. That's pretty like, good. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And you're getting home with four, yeah. which yeah. helps those guys in the secondary when you have seven in coverage. Right? They're yeah. not going to – you know, to, to add to that, Moj, that's the game plan. They're, they're, they're for sure – and Jonathan Gannon, he'll, he'll let you run. Like, yeah. he just lets you run. He doesn't give it – he doesn't care. Yeah. And and he's gonna let he's gonna let you run. He's gonna take away deep shots, and he's gonna get there at four. And they actually don't stunt at all either. Like if you, no, they don't. Allow, at, no. I think they're thirty second or thirty first or second in the NFL in, in stunts because they, they just need get to. there with four. And the covers crew to to win in the NFL consistently on defense, you have to be able to pressure with four. It, like people are you, the talk always is, oh, you know, they're gonna blitz this guy, especially against a guy like Mahomes, right? I mean, we see this. We used to do it to you guys all the time with Danny McManus. You want to blitz us? Great. We're getting everybody out, and he's getting rid of the ball, right? You want to blitz Pat Mahomes, he's going to kill you. But Philly gets there with four, and they don't vacate. Like, to, to stunt, you got to create a hole, yes. right? Yes. You want to see a quarter, a guy like Pat Mahomes, hey, he, he sees a looper. He might just go right where that looper came from for a first down, right? If you can beat, like, I say this a lot. To win consistently in the NFL, you got to beat guys. Like, guys, individual players have to be able to beat an win. individual player. Yeah. And I think what it will come down to is Philly's got more of those matchups where Philly's guy can beat Kansas City's yeah, guy. That's fair. You know what's a crazy, a crazy stat or ju- just something I, I looked at uh, about midseason, three-quarters of the way through the season. This is crazy. It's, and this is the evolution of the NFL defensively, and you just nailed it. It's I looked at the top, the top ten, or the the bottom, the least the least blitzes from from defenses. Okay, mm-hmm. so the bottom ten teams in blitz rate. Yeah, it was a who's who of the best defense in the NFL. Like, think about that. The teams that blitz the like the least were the top. Out of the top ten, it was like eight of those were were the top ten defenses. It just shows you, good defenses rush four because and- they don't want to deal with. The great quarterbacks yeah. now and great receivers, you don't want to deal with them. You need guys in the back end and two high safety looks. And strategic blitz, right? Like, I'd like to see the number of, of like, successful blitzes, blitzes that, that have a positive effect for your defense. Mm-hmm. I bet if you look at that list, I bet it's the teams that blitz the least. Yeah, probably. Right? Yeah. It because makes sense. Because it is, it's timely. Yeah. It, it comes from maybe a different place. Like, any offensive line, that lets a middle linebacker affect the, the rush in a in a blitz, right. it, like makes me makes me crazy. That should never happen. A, a box player blitzing should never affect. It should never come free, right? And a, a linebacker should never beat an offensive lineman. Now you might have a freak out there that that's a stud. You you know you see guys great pass rushing outside linebackers that you put on the edge and maybe they're going to get there. But but a, a blitz from the inside should should never you beat just, an offensive mean, line. You just mean because of because of guys just just coming coming down and everything got beat you outside. Is that the yeah, reason? Yeah, well, for that like you're like you got a uh, blitz should only beat you if it's coming from an angle right. from somewhere you can't get a guy right. to. Right. Right. And and to for a quarterback not to be able to beat a blitz, he's got to not expect it coming. A, 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 a good quarterback, a quarterback like Mahomes, right? right? You you blitz the the middle linebacker. Well, Kelsey's going to the middle, right? right? right. Like. It uh, you, you you can't win if if the if your pressure package that you depend on is blitz. I'm with David you. Sanchez yeah. is our guest TSN analyst. He's down here covering the big game. You know it's funny. Everybody that we talk to, well, I shouldn't say everybody, but the majority of people we talk to, the vast majority pick Philly. Um, is this a game where Philadelphia has to make mistakes to allow Kansas City to win it? No. 
You don't follow that? No. So I mean, you think Kansas City's just, you know. <laughs> Kansas City's as, as good as Philly. I mean, look, it's, all, it's easy to figure one thing out. The betting markets aren't stupid. So we can listen to every ask, uh, every, everybody we want talk about the Eagles are a much better team and they're better at this, 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 this. But when it comes down to it, and I agree with all those things. I agree yeah. that they have a better D-line, a better O-line. you got to play the game. Defense. Yeah, but they don't have the best quarterback. So yeah. at the end or of the, the day. Or the best coach. Well, the best coach, that's that's debatable. But, yeah, I, I'm with you. But Come po- on. point is, the betting line, when the betting line won't move past two or past one and a half, it's not getting to three. But we seem to think everyone thinks the Eagles are going to win. That's not reality because money money talks. And the people who are in the know and the people who are, are real betters, they're not – they're not slamming – everyone's not slamming the Eagles, and the, and the line dictates that. I See, I look at it a little bit differently, and I'm not going to pretend that I understand how the lines work. I think that's something we should talk to you about because you're all, all over that. You, you break the teams down, and this is some, a trap that I think I fall into sometimes, right? You look at the two teams, you start breaking it down, like what makes sense, right? And what makes sense, Philly's got more – aspects of their game that are better than yep. Kansas City. Not all of them are better. They do not have the best quarterback. And Andy Reid, I think, is one of the best coaches to ever, ever coach. Yep. And a couple of people have made the point, you give that guy two weeks, he's going to find something, right? But you look at the two teams, what should happen, Philly, more parts of Philly's team is better than the parts of Kansas City. I think Philly wins. That's not reality. As Moj just said a minute ago, you got to play. You got to play the game. I think somebody does, though. I think for Philly to lose, mm-hmm. they got to they got to make mistakes. If Philly plays their best game and Kansas City plays their best game, Philly wins ugly. Uh, okay. Well, let me let me say one one, one thing here. Uh, on the outside, think of this, right? And I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with that because they're yeah. Eagles are. I'm be- probably not going to disagree with you either. Eagles are Eagles are better all around team. Yeah. Sure. If you look on the outside, right, they're going to force. There's no question that. There's no question that Kansas City is gonna is gonna force Jalen Hurts to make big time throws into tight windows outside. That's like they're just not yeah. gonna let them run the ball because that's what they want to do. Jalen Hurts to me yet he had a great season. He hasn't proven that he can be an accurate big time passer. Yeah. His big time throw throw rate in the playoffs is 1.8 percent of his throws in the playoffs have been considered big time yeah. throws. Pat Mahomes yeah. is like seven percent. That's a massive. That's a massive leap. All right, who do you like and why? Well, I'm, I'm taking Kansas City right now okay. because I have a massive futures bet on on the Chiefs. Uh, look, I, I'm not making a game pick yet because I'm just going to let things play out. To be honest with you, and, okay. and see what happens closer to Sunday. Time for the Fab Five, brought to you by Delaney's. Okay, Tyron Langley, good childhood mm. friends of mm. Davis, my guys, Trevor and Clayton. I'm, I'm just making this up on a whim, right? So we're yeah. calling it the Fab Five. Five questions. I like, Dar- I like Darlene more than I like either of those boys, <laughs> to be honest with you. Ooh, Who that's doesn't? Cold. Who's- Darlene's yeah. sweet. And, yep. of course, Trevor. Um, okay, here we go. Fab Five. This pertains to your TSN crew down here in Phoenix. All right? Most likely to miss a morning meeting. Naylor, Farhan, oh, f- whoever. Na- I mean, Na- Naylor. Naylor might have missed the, Naylor? this morning's yeah. meeting. Yeah. I saw him last okay. night. Um, most likely to be late for a ride. Naylor's going to be on everything you ask these questions. Naylor's a beauty. Naylor. Okay. Most likely to forget to pay a tab when you go for dinner or his part of the tab. Dave Naylor. Okay. It's, it's Most time spent in makeup. Oh, it's going to be Kara Waglin. Yeah, it's going to be it, uh, male because it's not fair because he might have to do hair and Davis all that. Davis Sanchez, yeah, maybe? Yeah, if it's male, it's probably me. Okay. Uh, most likely to take a selfie with a celeb. Kara Waglin. Okay. Uh, all of us are ex-players. When I'm not taking a selfie with anybody, and I don't think Duffy gives a crap, and and Luke's not doing it. So yeah, that doesn't always hold true. We know uh, we have a friend who's an ex-player who would take a <laughs> selfie with anybody. Mitch Berger is the master. Yeah, oh, the dude. selfie master. I, I, seen, I wouldn't take a selfie with anybody. I, don't, I wouldn't take a selfie with I Michael have, Jordan. I have seen Berger swoop in in a span of 17 seconds, introduce himself, position himself for a selfie, take the selfie, and walk off. It's amazing. (laughs) Davis, you've been amazing as well. Thanks so much for stopping by. This has been a lot of fun. Continued success with TSN. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. I miss you guys. I miss you too. Nice to see you. For the record, we love love Mitch too. Oh, absolutely. Davis, love you. North 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 North